Hi, good morning folks. It's um, it's actually 10 minutes past 12 on Sunday, uh, the 17th of May, 9, uh, 2020. And I'm going to set myself up a challenge of uh, doing a portrait using the, uh, the Zorn palette. And I've just been watching this demo by uh, Alex Savaras on YouTube. And the Zorn palette is uses titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red light, and ivory black only. And uh, the results that he got were tremendous. So I'm going to try and reproduce this. Um, I haven't actually got cadmium red light, so we'll see what I've got. So the paints that I'm going to use are um, yellow ochre, spectrum red, titanium white, and carbon black. The most expensive of these three paints is the carbon black, actually. Spectrum red is probably the cheapest. Um, and what I'm going to do, try and do, is this portrait here so this is going to be extremely challenging because i'm trying to going to try and do it fast and i'm trying to get a reasonable lightness and with a restricted palette i'll be painting on this board over here which is my typical 45 by 60 centimeter, three millimeter MDF that's been treated with uh, three layers of concrete. So let's see how we go. Okay, the first thing I like to do is um, if I'm not if, if I'm not doing a commission and I'm not that anal about getting a likeness, I just like to analyze the picture. Look at the areas of lightness and darkness and what actually interests me about doing, for example, this picture. I like I like this this vignette effects around the side here where there's darkness moving on to the lightness that uh, that makes the central portion of the of the picture look very interesting oh, there's some sort of blemish over there which I'll have to get rid of um, the the contrasts are excellent uh, I like the, the light down here uh, taking about a third of the picture it's a nice dark background so the center of attention is obviously the face and that eye is is almost in in the classical the golden rule position it's a little bit low uh, but the this area over here is the center of interest so I'll be trying to do doing that. Um, what else is interesting about this? If you look at the lines, the way this picture moves, it also points to this area of, of interest. There's this line coming up over here. There's this reflection of the hair coming down here. There's this line over here. And uh, there's also some kind of feeling of a line down here. So it's almost like a cross that's pointing at the center of this area of interest over here. So it's a great photograph and it's gonna be a real challenge to do this. Uh, but hey, life is about challenges. So let's give it a go. So, I'm not going to do any fancy marking up. This picture is more or less in the center of here. So, there's going to be a line along here, a line up here, 
a line over here uh, about a third of the way up is going to be this area of, of light let's have a look so about a third is roughly there um, the the face is probably taking up I mean half the half the picture is there and the face is taking up a little bit more than half of the width of the piece of paper so in fact it's almost the width of this A4 piece of paper. So we know that the face, what else can we say? This is about a quarter of the way down. So let's mark the halfway point. The hairline is going to be probably there. Um, we've already decided that the neck is roughly there, so the head is somewhere in there. Uh, the tilt of the hair is something like this. The tilt of the head. is this kind of angle and there's a distinctive uh, chin is down here the center of the picture is roughly there Her eyes are roughly there, or her eyebrows are roughly there. Her eyes are in here somewhere, uh, and her nose is down here somewhere. Her mouth is roughly halfway between there. Okay, so we're getting a feeling for where the face is. So I'm just going to work on that for a bit and we'll see what happens. Okay, it's now 12.30. I've been working on this for 15, 20 minutes. And I've turned it upside down because uh, I want to see what it looks like when I look at it from a different perspective. So I'm just looking at the shapes, the relative shape sizes now and where they are the neck goes over there this comes down here somewhere over there the neck goes in the head goes around like so and meets a pixie ear that's coming out there some somewhere the eyes, make sure the corners line up, make sure the gap between the eyes looks normal. You should look at the relationship of the features, you should look at this triangle here. And if you reproduce the angles in that triangle, you should be fairly confident that it's more or less correct. So 
So there's this triangle, there's this triangle, and for the purposes of this exercise, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, the mouth, let's have a look, that's there. This little triangle of the upper lip is possibly a little bit too proud in mine. But um, I can't see any major problems there. Let me turn it around the other way. Possibly, possibly that cheek is too fat, but that could be adjusted. It's a nice dark background, so when I paint that black, you're going to have a much better idea of what that looks like. Uh, but generally speaking, I think I'm ready to spray this drawing to seal it and start the painting proper. Okay. Okay, now it's uh, 20 to one. I've just got some cheap hairspray and I've sprayed my drawing so Hopefully I can't move uh, any of this drawing. It won't be picked up by the oil pet. So I, uh, I have a few rules. I mean, rules are made to be broken, but um, I've got a few rules. One of them is you work from dark to light. Um, you work from the back to the front. Those are the two major rules. Um, and the reason why I have those two rules, they sound very sim similar, is that, uh, oh, and another rule is cover the board in paint. Because if, you, if you've got a limited session, like in, in, a, um, in a lesson, you want to feel like you've achieved something by the end of the lesson, so paint everything. Paint blocks before painting detail. Paint back to front, so do the background. When you've done the background, you're immediately getting a feeling for your subject, the shape of your subject. Paint dark to light because light is at the uh, at the front of any painting anyway light is highlights the the shape of anything is actually created by the light that's falling on it so the last thing you should do is paint the light because that's on the surface that's what's reflected back to you so those are my, my very simple rules. I mean, obviously rules are made to be broken. Um, but they, generally speaking, those rules work. So let's refer to the picture again. So what's nice about this picture is I love this. I love the texture of these kind of feathers that are down here, and and the lightness, and quite amazingly, the the light of that piece of clothing isn't detracting from the highlights over here. And this is the interesting bit. What I really love is you can actually see the fine texture of her face. I love. I love painting skin and I love the textures you see in skin so 
this to me is going to be the interesting part of the painting that highlight on the lip there's a big space over here that's because her hair is going to be flowing over there um, and this is largely solid black which once again drives the attention over here so what makes an interesting photograph and painting and it's really contrasts i mean this is this picture is a mass of contrast the extreme dark over there the extreme light over here um and the contrast of light on the features are what make it attractive and stand out so that's that's why i chose this picture it's a really nice picture and we'll see what we can do with uh, the zorn palette which as i said before is just um there's four paints yellow ochre titanium white carbon black and it should be cadmium red light but i've just got spectrum red so i'll start working try and get that kind of blueness that you see in that background i've added some white to the black and as I said, it's going to be a real challenge. So I'm back to using the minimum amount of turps again, because that addition of the white is allowing me to get that bluey effect. So I'm working, as I said, back to front, dark to light. And uh, we'll go from there. God, this really builds up your muscles because I'm really pushing this in. That is, it's, it's not good for my arthritis. Well, I haven't got arthritis yet, but I feel like I'm going to get it. Okay, so we've done some light over there. I could extend this grayness down here because of this vignette effect. So let's do that. So very impressionistic. Let me just get the rough feel down there. And, you know, sometimes all these textures that you do, they will sh shine through and uh, make it interesting, add to the interest. Okay, her hair, it's black, but there's a touch of red in there. So, I've only, I've only got the one red, the spectrum red. Uh, I'm going to get that black and um, I'm going to add a touch of red to it and um, maybe a touch of yellow ochre as well. So let's give that a go. Okay. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, possibly not quite enough red in there, but let's just try and define that profile. Notice I'm still using a very big brush. I always use the biggest brush I can get away with because you can really move the paint around right the hair it's dark and then it quickly becomes 
quite red there. Um, it's a lot darker over here, up to that highlight where her parting is. Uh, you can see the red of the black a bit better now. So let's just take that up there. Show that parting a little bit. In fact, we can just define that parting a little bit with brush strokes. So, I love the smoothness of this MDF. Um, canvas, I, and I suppose it's just because I just buy cheap canvas because hey, I can't afford the expensive stuff. Uh, the weave is so unforgiving. Unless you put multiple coats on it, it's so unforgiving. You use a lot of paint trying to fill in all the little gaps and indentations. So, that's the reason why I like to use. Uh, MDF. Right, there's these few strands down here which are overlaying the face, so I'm not going to be doing those. Um, let's add a bit more red. Okay, so the hair is going to be flowing away there, away there, somehow, and we'll be adding adding details later on. So what I'm trying to do really is to cover the board in paint in the first instance because. There's two things that define to make an effective painting, and that's when you shut your eyes. Sorry, when you when you lose focus in your eyes and you see the large blocks, that gives you a, an indication of how well you're doing with the painting. I mean, there's big blocks of colours here, and it's it's the shape. Of these blocks of color that's going to define what it looks like okay that that is is quite chubby there but hey that's going to come out in the wash when you see a mistake you don't have to fix it at that minute as long as you are aware there is a mistake as long as you know you've made a mistake then you can always fix it up okay so, let's do some indication of this white. So all that will be left then will be to start working on the face. Okay, so I've moved away from the big round brush. And because I want to lay flat surfaces. I've now mixed yellow ochre and the, uh, the red to try and get the skin color. 
and once again working dark to light I'll be doing all the darker areas first that's about the best match I can get with this, this limited palette and now I notice that I've covered over the neck so it's going to be down here a bit once again the colors are approximate at this stage because I'm just trying to cover the board cover the board that's the rule that's my rule I mean, she's got a bit of a, a red blush on that cheek. So you're looking at the painting, at the picture, and you're picking up little bits of information that you're going to be using later on. And as I said before, using this limited palette is a real challenge for me because I tend to use a whole variety of different paints So what we're going what we're trying to do is is just model the roundness of a face, get that dark in where it needs to be, and work from dark to light. Right, there's a very distinctive darkness moving down her nose. Um, the other thing I like about these boards is there's already a mid-tone. There's already a skin colour on the board itself. That you can you can just leave it there um, at places where it's suitable. So I've tried to redden up this. this paint a little bit to try and get that bit of warmth in those areas over here I mean this is already quite a warm colour which is good she's got quite a warm face So just look at the skin, the variation in skin tones. There's a bit of red down here. It's quite red under there. 
it goes more yellow ochre on this side okay that fake that cheek looks still looks chubby but uh they'll come out in the wash Right, let's lighten up the the skin. She's got quite an olive complexion actually. So this is possibly this is definitely too light, but it doesn't matter because I'm gonna be working that in. Now she's got the sort of forehead where there's these domes at the top there. So you've got to get this, um, these highlights right so you can reproduce that dome effect. Right, this is, this is way too red. But because I'm using such thin paint, I don't really mind because I, could, I know I can go over it with some yellow ochre and it's going to look fine. Right, that's the disadvantage about having an intense black to near the end, edge. I'm picking that colour up but uh, I'm not that concerned because it is going to come out in the wash. Now this paint is so thin that my fingers are not moving anything around, which is the way I like it. I'm still using a pretty big brush here. Right, I'm fixing up that problem that we observed before. Taking the nose up a little bit. It's quite light there. There's a bit of lightness there. There's going to be a touch of lightness there. You can also use the edge of these brushes to get Uh, a more defined line. So the real highlight is along the nose. And that highlight disappears into the into the cheek.
So you need to observe. It's it's getting these small details in that's going to make it effective. You know, there's there's a light bit over a brow. So you need to pick up all these little clues as to the shape that you're painting. Right, this, this brush is getting a little bit too, too big for my purposes. Um, okay, let's have a little rest for a while and I'll look at the clock. See how we're progressing time wise. Okay, so it's 20 past one, so this whole exercise is taking so far an hour and 10 minutes. Um, and I've noticed that this is way too fat. It's making this little girl look older, so I'll be bringing that in somewhat. And now I'm going to start working on smaller details with a smaller brush. So I'm, I'm adding little bits of red that I can see everywhere. Uh, I mean, the important thing is to not have just mono blocks of color. I mean, there is, she's got a subtle amount of red in that cheek over there. And all these little details will make the end product so much better. Right, okay. Let me try and define those eyes a little bit. Because the eyes are the most important thing. 
so the corner of the eye is almost in line with the middle of the mouth and through the tip of the nose and it needs to lie with that there and it comes up and then it goes down into a lid into her sorry her I had a, a senior moment there, her eyelashes. So she's got some light that defines it. And her eye comes around there and then there's this line that goes over there and then it's darker over here. And over and above that, is that lid is that lid it's quite angular and then it folds you see see how the lid is way beyond the opening of the eye the opening of the eye seems to end there and the lid extends way beyond that so it's a bit like that and then she's got these eyebrows that extend over there this needs to come in a fair amount and then we've got She's kind of looking That's a very Vermeer sort of look there actually I can imagine Vermeer doing this face. It's got something classical about it Right Right, the corner of her eye matches the extension of her mouth, which comes here in a smile and it comes down abruptly. It's very easy to, to make eyes too big. Right, remember, I'm only, only using those four colours. And as I said, it's a real challenge. Because I want to use other colours. Right, okay, those eyebrows. It's going to be the same, right height. Right, don't make the nostril too big. But don't make it too small either. That's too dark, but we'll get rid of that later.
Right, I'm going to try and get a better definition for that that profile because I'm not happy with it. That's a bit better. I'm a little bit more happy now. Um, whilst I'm here, now I've got some dark paint on my brush. Let's just try and define this hair a bit more. It's curling up over there. It's coming up around there. Now there's that forehead. So there's a few hairs coming down here. Uh, it's coming around here, bit of darkness over here, and this hair is going to be flowing all the way over here. It's going to make it dramatic. Now, something wrong with that eye. It's drooping down, the size is different. This eye is too large, it's looking downwards, it needs to be up, it needs to be curling up. So it's going to be a lot more like this. It's looking a bit better. Uh, I'll use this to do the eye. Right, there's the there's the cheek which comes around like this. And then there's a bit of shadow coming from the nose, from the nostril. Now this is this little area here is is slightly cooler, so it needs more more black in there, which is a cool color.
So we're still using those four basic colours. And somehow we're managing to get all these different shades and feelings of of other colours, which I think is quite remarkable actually. Okay, I think what I'll do is I'll turn the camera off and continue working and keep um, a watch on the time because this is an experiment using this limited palette and also it's a speed demonstration. Uh, but whilst I'm actually talking on the on the video i can't actually concentrate that well so i'm going to turn it off for a while and when i've got something to say i'll switch it back on again and the time is it's 25 to 2 25 to 2 so i've been working for what uh ooh, an hour and a half it's now two o'clock so i've been working on this for an hour and 50 minutes this is about as far as i want to go in this demo i'm still not happy with that cheek and a few other things so i shall carry on tomorrow in conclusion, I think the Zorn palette is very good and I shall continue using it as the base colours for most of my portraits with the addition of other accent colours as required. Um, so thanks very much for watching and um, why don't you give the Zorn palette a go yourself. Bye.